Let's talk about the importance of a good backlight or a side light in cinematography. A lot of the times when I'm looking through shots that I think look really good, for example, on Shot Deck, they have a whole library of stills from TV shows to movies and music videos. And when I'm looking through shots that I think look really, really good, I'll notice a pattern starting to emerge. Pretty much all of the shots that I think look really pleasing to my eye, they have either a really strong backlight or a side light that's motivated by the sun. And oftentimes cinematographers just leave that light on full blast on the far side of the face and will maybe come in to fill in the shadows with a smaller light source or just leave the shot looking super contrasty. So I wanted to see if I can sort of recreate what I like to see in movies. So here is a shot of me being super talented and solving a Rubik's Cube. I'm sitting at my dining table and I'm intentionally framing my shot so that you can see that there's windows all around me and it's daytime and it looks like sunlight is pouring in. When in reality, if I just turned off all of the lights, the shot will look like this, which by itself doesn't really look that bad. Now looking at this frame, we can see that there's two options for me to place a hard light source to imitate the sun. We could either place it right here behind this window outside, which would definitely become more of a backlight, or we can place it outside off to camera right out this window, which becomes more of a side light. And oftentimes I really do like that side light that can also double as a key light, just for efficiency. So I'm gonna set up the Cobor CL330, which is a 330 watt bicolor light. And I'm gonna put it on a C-Cent outside, making sure that it's raised up high and at a downward angle to better match the angle of sunlight if it were coming in through the window. Now, the reason why I'm placing lights outside is because if you think about the sun, it's a light source that is extremely far away and it's very, very bright. We're so used to seeing natural sunlight that way. So whenever we want to try and recreate sunlight, we have to make sure to use powerful enough lights and and moving them further away from our subject. So that's why you'll see that I have my CL330 about four to five feet away from my window, and I'm setting it to 60% power at 5400 Kelvin for that midday sunlight instead of that golden hour light. Now on the front of my light, I'm using what's called a Fresnel mount. The Fresnel mount will help concentrate the light and really help give it that hardness that I'm looking for with sunlight. I'm gonna make sure to leave a gap between my curtains and shears so that it's not cutting down any of that hard light. As you can see, the light just cuts right across my face and my shirt. And I also like that it's bright enough and at the right angle so that it can be the main source of light for me. Now this doesn't look too bad. And if I really wanted to, I can just leave the shot how it is right now. And for the most part, it'll work. But I feel like in order to really sell the effect of sunlight coming in through the window, I want to add another light for my background. When sunlight comes in, it usually doesn't just shine on like one specific place. Most of the time it's spread out across multiple different spots, some different little pools of light across your frame. So my plan is to try and hit that back part of the wall right behind me with some light. For that, I'm gonna be using the Cobor CL220, which is a 220 watt bicolor light with another Fresnel attachment. Now, something that I've done differently here is bouncing the light into an acrylic mirror in order to try and get that same hardness of light. But since I want little pockets of light hitting the wall, I've used gaff tape to tape up most of the mirror, except for a few pockets here and there where it ideally creates little spots of light. Now, through my phone BTS footage, it looks pretty pretty realistic, but when I actually shot it, it didn't really have that hard, crisp, defined edge that I was looking for in the shadows. And using something like a spotlight mount to create hard, defined shadows with cookies or just cutting down light and inserting some flags inside of the spotlight mount would have been really useful. But for what it is, I think I'm okay with it. Now you can see here that I had another CL220 set up to fill in any darkness on my face, but I found that if I turned it on, it lifted the contrast way too much and I didn't really actually need a key light for my face since the 330 was already doing so much. Another optional thing that I could do is bring in some negative fill to really crunch down on the shadow side of my face if I really wanted to go for a more contrasty look. I'm using a very big five-in-one reflector that I bought from Amazon. And I can also flip the reflector around to the shiny side if I really wanted to fill in more of the shadows of my face. But that's pretty much it for this short video. If you have any other questions, leave it down in the comments below. If you like this video, hit that like button and make sure to subscribe for more videos just like this one. Until the next one, my name is Alex Chung and I'll see you later. Bye.